How to Moscalar? If you always been confused today, you finally understand the differences. Let's go! Welcome to PSK Aqua. Hello my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into two of the most iconic freshwater fish species, the Pterophilum altum and the Pterophilum scalare. We'll cover everything from their appearance the behavior to habitat conditions and more. Oh, and yes, I know Rick is usually here with his questions, but he's on holidays today. We're going without him, okay? The Pterophilum altum, known as the true altum, originates from the Orinoco River and its tributaries mainly in Venezuela and Colombia. It lives in deeper, darker waters filled with submerged roots and branches. These waters are more acidic and have a slow flow, conditions to which the autumn has adapted. The Pterophilum scalari, or simply scalari, is found in various parts of the Amazon basin, mainly in Brazil, Peru and Guiana. It prefers shallow with water with a light current, but it's quite adaptable uh, to different habitats, which helps explain its popularity and success in the aquarium hobby. The Pterophilum altum, known as the True Altum, is more elegant and majestic due to its impressive height, reaching 25 to 30 centimeters from the dorsal to ventral fin. It's slightly taller and narrow than the Scalare, an adaptation for moving through the dense vegetation of the Orinoco River. The Pterophilum Scalare is more compact, reaching about 15 cm in high when fully grown, with some varieties uh, reaching about 20 cm in ideal conditions. Its smaller size makes it easier to keep in shorter aquariums. The Altum has a distinct head profile with a near 90 degrees angle between the snout and dorsal fin, giving it a high forehead. This shape helps to catch prey near the bottom and among plants. The Scalare has a smoother head profile, giving it a more rounded look, adapted for more open habitats with fewer vertical obstacles. Autumn fins are long and thin, with a wider spacing between fins rays, creating a skeleton-like look. It helps with camouflage in dense plant areas. Scalari fins are thicker and closer together, giving them a sturdier look. They often have stripped patterns uh, that helps them blend into the less dense vegetation. The altum has three dark vertical stripes running from the head to tail, which are quite prominent in young specimens. Over time, these stripes may fade, especially if the aquarium environment does not closely mimic their natural habitat. The scalari also has vertical stripes, but they are generally less defined than those of the altum. The scalari has a greater variety of patterns and colors, especially due to selective breeding in aquariums. You can find scalaris in shades of silver, gold, black and even in marble patterns. The Altum is generally more shy and sensitive to environmental changes. It prefers calm tanks with few competing fish. Additionally, it is known to be more social within groups of its own species. The Scalari, on the other hand, is bolder and more adaptable. It is less intimidated by the new movements and additions in the aquarium and tends to be more territorial. However, compared to the Altum, it is easier to keep in community tanks as long as there are no overly aggressive fish. Altums are peaceful with small, non-threatening fish like medium-sized tetras like penguin tetras, colombianus tetra or uh, buenos aires tetra. Avoid active or aggressive tank mates to prevent stress. 
Scalaris being more robust can live with a wider range of fish, including small cichlids. However, avoid tiny fish like neons, uh, as they may be seen as prey. The Pterophyllum autum and Scalari have different chromosomes affecting water tolerance. Autums are more sensitive to changes in pH and hardness, requiring soft, acidic water to thrive. Scalaris, however, are more adaptable to different water conditions. They live in diverse uh, Amazon regions with varying water characteristics, uh, making them more tolerant of domestic aquarium settings. Some breeders attempt to hybridize Haltums and Scalaris to create a hardier Haltum. However, these hybrids often resemble both species but behave more like Scalaris. Altums need higher temperatures around 26 and 29 degrees Celsius to maintain a healthy immune system. Scalaris are more flexible, tolerating 24 to 28 degrees Celsius, making them a popular choice for community tanks. Altums require a tank at least 50 centimeters tall and 200 liters in volume to for Altums with tall plants and driftwood to mimic uh, their natural habitat. Scalaris can thrive in tanks starting at 150 liters with 40 to 50 centimeters in height, which is sufficient uh, for small groups of four Scalaris. The Altum is extremely sensitive to water quality. It requires a very low pH between 4.5 and 6 and also very low hardness. The Scalari is more flexible, tolerating a pH between 6.5 and 7.5 and can adapt to a wider range of water hardness, making it more accessible for beginners. Breeding autumns in captivity is possible, but difficult due to their strict requirement for pH, water hardness and temperature. They need a dedicated tank with very soft acidic water for breeding. Scalaris breed more easily, often triggered by water changes or a slightly temperature increase. They lay eggs on flat surface like broad leaves or stones and guard them aggressively. Autumns are calm parents, protecting eggs without much aggression. Scalaris, however, are known for defending their nests vigorously, which can stress other tank inhabitants. Both are omnivorous, but the Altum is slightly harder to feed, often uh, needed to be trained to accept pellets and frozen food. In its natural habitat, the Altum consumes small crustaceans and insects. The Scalari, on the other hand, adapts well to almost any types of aquarium food, from flakes and pellets to frozen food, and is less demanding in terms of diet. True Altums are rare and often imported, making them more expensive. An adult uh, Altum may cost two or three times more than a Scalari, making it a prized fish for experienced aquaristics. Scalaris are widely available and affordable, with prices varying depending on the color, patterns and varieties, making them a popular choice uh, with beginners. The Altum is often called the king of the angelfish, due to its elegance and rarity in the aquarium world. Aquarists who manage to keep Altums healthy are highly respected in the community because of the level of care this species uh, requires. The Scalaris, while more common, is equally admired for its diversity of colors and patterns. Thanks to several decades uh, of selecting breeding, there's a wide variety of Scalaris, from the classic silver to exotic versions like marble and koi. 
I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the difference between Pterophyllum maltum and Pterophyllum scalari. Now you can identify each species and decide which is best for your tank. Remember, each has unique needs and keeping them healthy requires knowledge and commitment. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you had experience with Autumns or Scalaris and what challenges you faced. Thank you for your support and I'll see you in the next video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe. Thank you.